Okay, so uh, today's session is going to be about uh, sorting and we will discuss some basic problems about sorting and we will try to cover as much as we can in this two hour session. Okay, so I let us see if we have a quorum. Let me see how many people are here. I think we are good to start right now um, cool so let's get started <clears throat> so uh, i am pretty sure that a lot of you here are already aware what sorting is but still uh, since some of you may not be aware so let's just define sorting so sorting is basically arrangement of numbers so that each number is greater than the number before it greater than or equal to the number before it okay so if there is such a sequence then we call that sequence as sorted okay and uh, let's move forward okay so before we start just to get pulse of the class i will launch one poll and uh, let's see so basically this is just a poll to see how many of you are aware about some sorting algorithms uh, i think you will have two questions which has been launched you would be able to see average time complexity of merge sort and average time complexity of selection sort just so that i get some idea about if the people are aware about what sorting is okay average time complexity of merge sort Okay, I'm seeing people answering. I'll wait for a minute. In the meantime, I'm seeing a lot of people are joining as well. So this will give me an idea how to pace my lecture today. For those who have joined late, you will see a poll in your screen. Uh, we have just started uh, and I'm just checking the level of the session. So if you guys answer these two questions, I will get a good idea about how to pace my lecture today. So feel free to answer. Even if you don't know, just answer anything. It's fine. I'm not expecting a correct answer. Really. Okay. So a lot of you have answered and I'm seeing that average time complexity of merge sort. Majority 58% of people have said it is N login. And average time complexity of selection sort, 58%. Uh, again, majority of people have said that it is order of n square. Both of which are right. Okay. Okay. But that doesn't matter. We will start from the basics. And I have an idea about how to pace my lecture today. Cool. So let us uh, start. So how do you sort trivially? Right. If you don't know anything and you are given a sequence, how do you sort it? So the most brute force way of sorting would be that you traverse the entire list, find the smallest element and swap it with the element which is at the first position. Okay. Now the smallest element would have been correctly placed at the first position. And now you only have to worry about the subarray starting from 2 to n. Right. Because the first element has already been correctly placed as the smallest element. Right. Because the smallest element in the sequence uh, will be placed in the first position in the in the sorted sequence, right? I hope this is clear that if I have a uh, three numbers, three, one, two, then the smallest of the three, which is one, will be placed at the first position. So once I place one at the first position, uh, I swap three, one, two. So I swap one and three. Uh, so I have one, three, two. And now only I have to worry about sorting three and two, right? So that's what it is. And every time you find the smallest element, and swap it with the first position of that subarray. And at the end, you will have an array with one element and that will be the largest element. And in this way, you will be able to sort the entire array. This is also called a selection sort. I'm seeing, comparing with one element, we can sort. Yeah. So this is a brute force sorting algorithm, right? 
so for those who have just joined we have just started and we are we, we were discussing uh, what is sorting and how do you trivially sort a sequence so we are going through a brute force sorting algorithm where you find the smallest element in the sequence swap it with the element in the first position and then repeat the same for the subarray starting from 2 to n right and keep doing it and after n trials you will end up with an array which is completely sorted and at each trial to find the smallest element you will have to visit the entire subarray so it turns out that the time complexity for doing this is order of n square so in order of n square is our baseline okay so a trivial brute force sorting algorithm will always give us the answer in order of n square so we have to so today's session will be based on algorithms which are better than order of n square okay we will not discuss algorithms which are order of n square because those are trivial algorithms right which we already know how to solve we have already discussed you can have two for loops and solve this in probably four or five lines of code now just for information uh, best sorting algorithm does anybody know what's the best sorting algorithm to sort uh, numbers any guesses what's the best known algorithm which can solve this problem in best possible time right and a general algorithm right which works on all types of input any guesses anybody wants to give a trial i am seeing some answers in chat much sort much sort yes absolutely right and as you guys have guessed one of the most general sorting algorithms which are widely known by everyone is much sort and heap sort uh, heap sort is second most widely known algorithm but much sort is quite popularly known by everyone right <clears throat> so much sort is the algorithm we will not go into the detail right now but just for you guys to know that the most trivial algorithm the most basic algorithm that we know to sort is order of n square and the most general algorithm that we know to sort a sequence of anything is much sort which is order of n log n okay but this session is going to be a little different okay the session will be busting a lot of myths that we have about sorting so sorting we are always we have always looked sorting at the black box in any language possible there is a collections dot sort or there is a stl sort and i i don't i can't think of a language doesn't have a sorting library but because of this there are a lot of misconceptions that we have about sorting so before starting the session uh, now that you know that the most trivial algorithm to sort a sequence of number is order of n square and the most general algorithm Uh, which works on all types of input is merge sort uh, which solves this problem in n log n uh, can you guys answer these three questions first question is uh, what's the best time complexity to sort 1 million numbers second question is what's the best time complexity to sort 1 million integers and the third question what's the best time complexity to solve 1 million strings and the session will be based around these three problems and you will see how uh there are a lot of misconceptions with this so i'm seeing answers in chat is n log n for all the three uh i don't want you answer to all of these three questions together rather uh, what i want you guys is that uh, let me launch that and let's take answers of everyone so feel free to write your answers i have created i have started a, a poll Uh, which is the, you have to type your answer for these three questions what do you think is the best time complexity to sort 1 million numbers and what do you think is the best time complexity to sort 1 million integers and what's the best time complexity to sort 1 million words so all of us have used sorting so what do you think is the time complexity when you use uh, when you want to sort them people can write in chat or answer on the poll i am seeing a lot of people have answered okay take i'll wait for a couple of minutes people can answer and then we will go about busting a lot of myths about sorting that that is floating around from quite some time okay we have something in chat o n for integers okay fine let's see lots of answers and i will be ending the poll in next 
next 10 seconds. So please write your answers. Okay, so now I will just end the poll. Right, so now you guys have answered and I know the answers and let's see if that changes after this session. So now we will start the session from here, right? So I just gave a brief, uh, because you all know, we all of us here know about sorting, right? That sorting is a problem which is solved. Merge sort is probably the best known algorithm to sort any type of input. It works in n log n. If we want to do this trivially, it takes order of n square, blah, blah, blah. And now let's start busting a lot of myths about sorting. And this is the first topic of this session, which is sorting candies. Okay, so I will share my screen. And you guys let me know <clears throat> if you guys are able to see my screen. Second. Are you guys able to see my screen? One second. Let me share again. Is my screen visible? Can I have confirmation? I guess my screen is visible right yes, now. Yes, your screen is uh, screen is visible now. Thank you. It's a lot. Okay. Now I will start the session. Think. Everybody has joined as well. So, okay. Zara, are you there on call? Can you keep admitting people? Okay, cool. Fine. So let's start with the first topic, which I had for today. Just sorting candies. Okay. So this is a trivial question. You have a jar and inside that jar there are two types of candies okay one are green candies and the another are red candies okay so imagine there is a kid who has got hold of this jar and he wants to sort the candies right which means that he wants to separate the green and the red candies right that's what sorting will mean here there are only two types of input green candy and red candy so put the kid sort this jar of candies right as a kid he will pick one candy he will check the color of the candy he will ask one question i think is this green in his mind if the answer is yes this will go in one pile if the answer is no this will go in the another pile which is red pile right so in this way he will be able to sort out all the green candies in one jar and all the red candies in another jar so this five year old kid has also solved the problem of sorting where input is of a particular type. Of course, this is a special case. But can anybody tell what was the time complexity if we use this algorithm for this kind of problem? What was the time complexity to sort this jar full of candies of two types? Any guesses? So I pick every candy one by one and I ask one question after picking that candy. Is this green? If this is green, yes. Then here. If no, then here. So how much time I'm taking? If there are N candies in the jar, then what would be my time complexity, right? I would take N trials, right? Every candy I will pick one by one, ask one question and divide it into two piles, correct? So in this way, I would be able to, so a lot of people have answered order N, of course. So, so for this type of input, we even a kid knows that this can be solved in order of n time of course the kid doesn't know what order of n means but if you give a kid a jar of candy and give him a task to divide this into uh, two piles he will be able to do it in order of n time right much sort will probably solve this in order of n log n time so for this input even a kid is smarter than your much sort 
but now let's complicate this a little bit okay so now we will ask the same problem you have a jar but now you have three types of candies not two types of candies so now let's see what colors do we have so we have white blue and green okay so you have white blue and green candies okay so let me fill them up so you have blue candies few of them then you have a few white candies and then you have some green candies okay so now what time would the kid take to sort this again sorting here means that he can divide it into three piles now right with white blue and green and using the same algorithm he can solve this but how many questions will he have to ask in his head now right he will look at the candy and he will ask himself is this a white candy no then he will have to ask is this a blue candy if it's still no then he knows this is a green candy right and if he gets a yes on either these two questions then he has already figured out that it goes in which bucket so at max he will ask ask two question every time is this white if the answer is no then he will move to ask is this blue and after these two question he knows which pile the candy goes in and by asking these two questions for n candies he will be able to sort the input of three types of candies again time complexity turns out to be order of two times n can we go ahead and generalize this for n uh, for k type of candies so you have a jar okay and you have now k types of candies so using the same algorithm this kid will take how much time to sort these k type of candies so for three type of candies it took him 2n time to sort for two types of candies it took him 1n time to sort for similarly for k type of candies it will take him how much time k minus 1 yes absolutely right he will have to ask k minus 1 questions for each candy and in this much time the kid will be able to sort and if this k is much much smaller than your n which means the types of candies are much much smaller than the number of candies which is uh, of course the case right Num types of candies will be only limited but candies can be a lot right if you go to a factory you will have 1 million candies but the type of candies won't be a lot right it won't be 1 million for sure so we can say that it is still solvable in order of n time if k is much much smaller than n right now see using this small uh, judgment of a kid sorting candies how we can apply this on numbers and you will be surprised to see that the answer holds true so now i will reframe the question instead of jar i will have a set this set has integers from 1 to 3 can have integers up till k so these are the possible integers that can be there in your input okay these are the types of candies similarly these are the type of input that is possible and then of course you have an array comprising of these numbers so you can have 3 3 3 2 1 2 3 1 dot 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 5 5 6 6 let's say and the size of this array is n and now we have already seen that if i place this kid again and i educate him a little bit about numbers he can use the same algorithm pick a number and ask is, is uh, uh, keep asking is 3 equal to 1 no is 3 equal to 2 no is 3 equal to 3 yes move it to the three pile right and similarly you will divide it into k piles and now you will have your answer again in k minus 1 times n let's see this in a little bit more detail how this works so basically you have an input array and we know that the range of this input can only be from 1 to n okay all numbers between all integers between 1 to n and your array has these numbers
and let's fix this number to for the sake of simplicity let's fix this to five okay for now and this is an unsorted array and i want to sort this so what will i do i'll pick this array before doing anything i will create my five buckets or jars right my own piles so i will have one pile for this one pile for this one pile for this one pile for this and all i need to do is go to each number and ask is this equal to 1 no this is not equal to 1 is this equal to 1 no is this equal to 1 no is this equal to 1 is this equal to 1 no is this equal to 1 yes if this is equal to 1 yes then i increment a counter or basically just add this number here and you can be a little bit smart about it and you can just maintain a counter because you are just storing how many ones are there in the input. So you get one. And if you again encounter one, then you do a plus one. Similarly for two. So you keep counting how many twos are there, how many threes are there, how many fours are there, how many fives are there. A better way to do this would be see a number and then have a way in which you can find this number maps to this counter of three and I will do a plus one. And you can use something like an array or a hash map. Let's say you have an, you have an array of five numbers and each of these elements are just measuring how many times, this is storing how many times one has occurred. This index in this array, so this is a new array, which we can call as count array. So count array is storing count of uh, the times that index has occurred in this array, right? So at index number one, we will store how many times one has occurred in this array. So two times, right? And for index number two, we will store how many times two has occurred in this array. So that's three times, right? How many times three has occurred in this array? One, two, three, four, that's four times. And how many times four has occurred? That's one, two, two times. And how many times five has occurred? That's again, two times, right? So after this, I can create a sorted array. How will I create it? I will go to index number one and I'll see one has occurred two times. Okay, so write one twice. How many times two has occurred? Okay, three times. So write two thrice. How many times three has occurred? Four times. Okay, so write three, four times. And how many times four has occurred? Okay, uh, four has occurred two times. So write four twice. And how many times five has occurred? Okay, five has also occurred two times. And now your array is sorted. So by counting the number, so by counting how many times a number has occurred, you can get a sorted uh, answer. Uh, by maintaining a count array and then traversing that and writing your output. And this is solvable in how much time. So let's see what time we are taking. So we are picking a number and we are looking up to that index. So looking up at an index in an array is constant time, right? If you are storing a map, then also it becomes a constant type. So in this case, we can simplify uh, because the range of input is from one to five. So you can say we just have a array and but whatever the number comes, we go to that index and increment. Okay. So lookup is also order of one. Increment is also order of one. So this whole array will be populated in order of n time if n numbers are there. And once this whole array is populated, then I will traverse this and I will just duplicate my numbers based on the count and I will have the resultant array. Again, all of these operations take order of n time. Okay. Any questions so far? Switch case is easier to proceed. Yeah. So now let's see how this will scale. So you have a range and then you have an array of numbers. So now we did it for five numbers, we'll do it for k numbers. So you can have one, two k numbers and your array will of course have anything, but the input can only be one or anything between one to K, right? It won't be anything outside this, but the size of this array can be huge. One, two, three, one, two, dot, 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 right? This is there. And I'll use the same algorithm. I will populate a count array. And this count array will only have K elements. One, two, three, four, five, dot, 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 K. And for each element in this count, for each index in this count array, I will store how many times one has occurred, how many times two has occurred, how many times three, four, five, and so on. 
and how can i do this i will start one by one i will go to the first element and i will go to the and i look up at the first index of this array and i will do a plus plus then i'll go to the second element i'll see it is 2 so i will go to the second index of this array and i'll again do a count of plus plus and so on and so forth and at the end of the iteration i will have written here how many times one has occurred how many times two has occurred how many times three has occurred and so on and then i will recreate the output array by duplicating one has occurred two times okay so write one twice two has occurred four times so write two four times and so on right so in order of n time i can sort this type of input where a range is fixed right if the range is fixed then we can sort this in order of n time any questions as of now no cool so now again a popular question comes okay this is count sort probably because we are storing a count array yeah fun fact this sort is called count sort and but a general question is okay this is too specific to a use case right uh, i don't see how this will be any time useful because my input numbers don't have a range defined right but if you look at this carefully and if i ask this question to you sort 1 million 8 bit positive integers does this map to this problem can anybody think how does this map so when i say 8 bit positive integer what's the range 0 to One twenty-seven, right? Because eight-bit number can only fit two fifty-six numbers. So positive integers in this will only range from zero to one twenty-seven. But there are one million of those, which means there are ten power six integers. But all of them are in this small range of one twenty-eight numbers, right? Positive because they are positive. So one twenty-eight goes right into half, and you are. Range is only 128 numbers. So I just populate an array of size 128 from 0 to 127. And I'll keep counting how many times 0 has occurred, how many times 1 has occurred, how many times 2 has occurred, how many times 127 has occurred. And then I populate an array by duplicating as many times that number has occurred. And I will solve this in order of n time. So can I say that I can sort 1 million 8 bit positive integers in order of n time? Right? This is specific, this, this is no longer specific, right? This now becomes a little bit general. That all 8-bit positive integers can be sorted in order of n time. Any questions, any doubts? Anybody is having any conceptual difficulty here? No, right? Again, how would we do this? So you will have 1, 2, 127, 2, 3, 4. Let's say you have maintained your count array of these indexes when zero comes you increment the counter of zero to one then one comes you write one here 127 comes you write one here two comes you write one here three comes you write one here four comes you write one here and let's repeat a few numbers and then again one comes so you increment this again two comes increment this increment this increment this increment this and then uh, finally when you have visited all the elements of this array uh, just go through your count array. See, zero has occurred one time. Okay, write it once. One has occurred two times. Okay, write it twice. Two has occurred two times. Okay, write it twice. Three has occurred twice. Write it twice, and so on and so forth. You will get a sorted sequence. So, fun fact: by this kid sorting algorithm, which we started with a kid and jar problem, this maps to count sort. And count sort can solve 8 bit integer, positive 8 bit integer sorting in order of n. Let's try to generalize this. Why 8 bit? Can I make this a little more general and let's see till when this special case holds? Can I use the same algorithm for sorting 1 million? 
let i will only focus on positive integers we will talk about how we can do it for negative integers as well but right now only let's just focus on positive integers so how can we sort 1 million 16 bit positive integers can i use the same algorithm anyone what will be the range now for one 16 bit positive integer 0 to 2 power what any 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 guesses 2 power 16 minus 1 right so 0 to 2 power 15 minus 1 right i hope this is what you meant right because there will be uh, a yes. counterpart as well right so this is the range but what is 2 power 15 any guesses 16 million maybe mm, no so 2 power 10 is 1000 1024 to be precise and times 2 power 5 if you do so that's just 32000 approximately so you are looking at 32000 here and there is 10 power 6 here can i again use the same algorithm i will just need this much space right my algorithm is only constrained to space i will need an array of size 32000 and i have one 10 power 6 numbers i will create a count array of 32000 indexes 0 to 32000 approximately and i will keep counting and at the end i will iterate this count array and populate my output so again this is possible right but here slowly and steadily now you will try to understand that the problem of this sorting is not time complexity is space complexity till when can i do this if i if i don't put a range on my input type can i use this algorithm if i don't tell you if i don't even tell you that this will be my range can you use count sort no how will you create that array without knowing the size of that array count array right for an array you need to statically allot a space and you are creating array because it is giving you o and lookup right without an array this doesn't work so how can i create an array if i don't know the range and that's the drawback so that's the first point that you should know drawback of count sort so firstly let's discuss where count sort works and now we also know its drawback so count sort works when the range is well defined and you need to be smart about it somebody can tell you straight away that the range is two types black and red candy somebody can give it to you to you indirectly that eight bit positive integers the range is well defined okay second the range is It's, it should not just be well defined. What if I say that the range is 1 billion? You have to sort 1 million numbers, but the range of the numbers can be from 0 to 1 billion. Can I still use the same algorithm? I can't populate an array of size 10 power 9. Uh, I can, at least not in my laptop. I will have to take, buy a server from AWS to do this. So now the bottleneck becomes the space complexity. So we will only use this algorithm till when the range is less. So only works, only works when the range is storable. Because when you start going higher and higher, your space becomes more and more expensive. And this algorithm becomes very, very uh, hard to compute, right? In your laptop, you can't declare an array of more than 10 power 7 size. Okay. So for 1 billion numbers, right then and there, your algorithm can't work on your laptop. Tomorrow, I can find an input size which won't even fit the AWS server because this is not scaling. I need to define the range and that range has to be in the limit of storage, right? Only works when the range is storable. So these are the two main points that you should know and the time complexity for this algorithm is order of n and the space complexity of this algorithm is order of range plus n which is the number of integers which have been given okay whichever is larger plus means uh, 
you have to store the input, right? So n is coming from there and r is coming for the count array. So r plus n, and this is where the bottleneck is there. So we can't generalize because when I ask you to sort a number, I generally don't give you a range. So only when the range is well-defined, I will use this algorithm. And it not only needs to be well-defined, it should fit my memory. So these are the two constraints when you would use count sort. Okay. So any questions so far? So the time complexity is always order of n for count sort. Now let me give you some practical examples where people should use uh, count sort, but we are not using count sort. Okay. So one of these examples are firstly was this 8-bit positive integer input that we talked about. Another was 16-bit positive integer. And you will see these are very general. Uh, why do you say that this is anything? So do you know the integer that we are using today? Right? What's the size of that integer? Generally, it is based on your, uh, based on what type of architecture of your laptop is. It is generally 32-bit integers. And if we go back to four or five years back, probably when most of you guys were in college, then ints used to be 16-bit. And even today you have 16-bit integer, you have to specifically define it, unsigned in 16-bit. So if your input type is 16-bit integer or 8-bit integer, and you're sorting positive integers, then you will always use count sort, but how many of us really use count sort there? Probably no one is actually going and using count sort. We are still applying merge sort on that using some, right? Which is not correct. So you should keep your eyes open. Another very practical example are sorting colors. How many of you know that uh, in images, there are only limited number of colors, right? Um, I don't know the exact number, but there are only 256 types of colors or something. Uh, and if you are sorting colors, then again, you should use count sort. Another example would be if you are sorting characters, right? How many a character size is always irrespective of the size of your architecture of your laptop or the processor that you're using. Size of a character is always one byte. Okay. Uh, so it will always be from like, there can only be 256 type of characters. Right. So again, because the range is well defined, you know that the it, it is only ranging from zero to two fifty six ASCII numbers. So basically, if you, you can sort them on the basis of ASCII number, not the character, right? Because count sort only works on integers. So ASCII numbers are integers. We all know, and they will only range from zero to two fifty six or two fifty five. Okay. So again, if you want to sort characters, you will always use count sort. So these are the two applications. Firstly, I have written, and secondly, character sorting, not string sorting. Character sorting, you will always use count sort. Another application. Okay. But we all generally fail to recognize. We all have this very hard coded in our mind sorting, matlab, merge sort. It's not the case. You need to look at the input which is coming, and only then maybe you can do it in better than what so right so this was one such example now we'll move to another category of algorithm okay and this category of algorithm is called bucket sort and this is a addition to your count sort and i'll come to that how this is an addition so what was the drawback when we were using count sort so when you when we were using count sort, the drawback was if the range is R, then I will need an array of size R. Right? If the range is two fifty six, I will need an array of size two fifty six. If the range is uh, one thirty two thousand, then I will need an array of size thirty two thousand. Right? So bucket sort tries to solve that problem. It says that remember that kid problem when we were solving that using uh, you had a jar and you had types of candies and he prepared piles of them, right? For red and black. And then at the end, uh, you can concatenate these piles and you have a sorted sequence. Similarly, merge so uh, bucket sort works on a similar approach, 
Okay, it is very similar to count sort. In fact, you will know that count sort is a specialization of bucket sort. Bucket sort is the larger sorting algorithm. What it says that instead of defining an array to store count, we had a count array right here to store count. Don't do this. Instead, have buckets like in this case. So have buckets and these buckets will be of range. So now it's what it says that have buckets, let's say of range 0 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25. Okay. So these are your buckets. And for each of these bucket, so now let's have an input as well. So the so let's say the input is from 0 to 25. Okay. So a count sort would have how many? The count sort count array would have how many, how much size? It would have size 25, right? Or to store all the numbers from 0 to 25. But bucket sort finds a way to reduce this. Okay. It's a, it tells don't have one index to store one count, rather have a bucket. And we will see how that solves. So you have uh, unsorted sequence. And it says, that define buckets and for each bucket, go to this input, input is zero. So where this input would lie? Zero to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25. Where do you see that this zero lies? In? So this zero lies here. So go and write this zero here. Okay. Similarly, you will see that this zero again will come here. This 25 goes here. This three again comes here. This one, comes here, this two again comes here, this three again comes here, this four again comes here, this 25 again comes here, this one again comes here, this one again comes here, this three again comes here, this four again comes here. Okay. So now what it says, and there will be also, you know, six, seven, six, something like this for these for these, okay, if the input is equally distributed across this range, then they will all have some, some elements. And after you have distributed your elements, it says use the trivial sorting, use any ON square sorting to sort this bucket, okay. Sort the individual bucket in a, with a trivial sorting algorithm. We'll come to it, why it works. And after you have sorted, so if I sort this properly, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, I just need to concatenate them, right? So now let's firstly understand the algorithm with the steps. So firstly, divide range into buckets. Then append numbers to correct bucket. ON square sort each bucket, append all buckets. And at the end, you will have a sorted sequence. Let's see a practical example. So you have an input one. So let's say from one to 10, you have some numbers. Okay, something like this. Okay, we'll have dot, 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 dot. And then you will create buckets. You know that you, you, you saw the array and now you know that the array numbers range from one to 10. Unlike count sort, instead of having a count array of size 10, here you will say that, okay, let's have buckets of size three. So I will define buckets like this from one to uh, three here, from four to uh, let's say seven here from eight to 10 here. And now I will keep appending whenever I get a number. Okay. One here, two goes here. Again, this two goes here. One comes here. This three also comes here. This four goes here. This four goes here. This five goes here. This six goes here. This 10 goes here. Okay. Something like this goes here. And then you sort this using own square, sort this using own square, sort this using own square and append them. Okay. And once you append them, you have a sorted sequence. And these are the four steps. One, two, three, four. 
So firstly, first step is divide the range into buckets. This depends on you. The bucket size, you define it. And then you append the numbers into correct buckets. Order of n square sort for each bucket and append all buckets. Firstly, any questions on how bucket sort works before we move into what's the time complexity of bucket sort? Any questions? Cool. So now let's see what's the time complexity of bucket sort. So bucket sort time complexity is very interesting. Why is it interesting? I'll tell you. So there is a very common question. Okay, bucket sort doesn't look like it is really, you know, it is much worse. You know, we are sorting each bucket in order of n square. Um, it is, it looks like order of n square algorithm, but no, it it won't. Let's do this with a with with this small puzzle. So if we have 100, you can divide 100 into two buckets of size 50 each. And you can do also divide 100 into 50 buckets of size 2, right? 50 times. So if I individually sort this bucket using ON square, how many steps will be there? ON square means 2500-ish steps. Again here, 2500-ish steps. So total we can say how many steps I will take to sort this somewhere around 5,000 and here how much time will I take for each bucket order of n square. So almost four operations, four operations, four operations, 50 times. So that is 200. So what do we infer from here? Any, anybody can, anybody wants to say, so depending on how we divide a number into buckets like a, a range of 0 to 100 can be divided into 0 to 50 and then 51 to 100 okay and then sorry not this this is not what i mean if you divide 100 numbers in such a way that there are 50 numbers in one bucket and 50 numbers in another bucket then to sort this 50 number you will take 2500 operations but if you divide this 100 numbers into two elements of 50 buckets, right? Each bucket has two numbers and there are 50 buckets. So to sort each bucket, you are only taking four steps, right? Order of n square. So this turns out to be more linear, right? 200. And this is more close to, so if you just sort this in order of n square time, so 100 square is how much? 10,000. This is more close to the order of n square approach. This tends to order of n square approach and this tends to order of n approach. So what did I say? Let's summarize here. That if you have a bucket B and if you uniformly distribute it into buckets and inside those buckets, if you ensure that the number of elements are as less as possible. So for this, what you will do, you will try to have as many buckets as possible, right? So you can have B1 bucket, B2 bucket, bk buckets but if you have the more the number of buckets you have the higher is the chance that your sorting time complexity will become order of n and the lesser buckets you have if you only divide this input into two buckets b1 and b2 so you will end up with n by 2 elements here and n by 2 elements here if the input is uniformly distributed then this will take order of n square time to sort and this comes out to be order of n square by 2 whereas here we saw in this example that if you divide the bucket such that each bucket size is as less as possible, then this tends towards a linear time algorithm, right? This is just two times hundred, and this is n square by two, right? So, any questions so far? Are you guys able to understand this concept of how bucket sort works? That bucket sort asks you to divide the input range into buckets and then assign numbers to buckets. And it also wants you to create buckets in such a fashion that each bucket has numbers uniformly distributed and each bucket has as less numbers as possible because you will sort each bucket using order of n square algorithm. And at the end, you will just append all these bucket results and give me the output array. So the lower the number of elements which go inside this bucket, the better it is for you right so any questions so far it it is in 
that case more like merge sort just no it's quite different quite different we'll, we'll discuss how merge sort is very different than bucket sort okay so now you see that there are two factors on which bucket sort depends and that's why that that's the demerit of bucket sort it solves the problem of count sort but introduces another set of problems the first problem uh, the first problem it is is how to divide into buckets how do i divide how do i choose you have given me a number you have given me array you have given the range and you are asking me to divide into buckets how do i divide such that all of these criteria are met second is how to ensure very less elements are there in each bucket right to make it linear i need as less numbers as possible in each bucket because i will sort each bucket using a order n square algorithm so how do i ensure this turns out if the input is uniformly distributed like if i use a random number generator to give you a sequence then the number then the range of numbers is uniformly distributed so let's say i use a input rand 100 which gives me a number from 0 to 99 right this method is there in almost all languages and if i call this 1 million times then i will have my input uniformly distributed what does that mean which means zero will occur as many times as one occurs as many times as two occurs as many times as three occurs as many times as 99 occurs right because the input is uniformly distributed there is no bias to one type of input that's what uniform uh, input means so if the input is uniform then you can blindly divide it into buckets whose range is very small and that will ensure that very less elements are there so for example let's take the same example of uh, 100 elements right so if 100 elements are uniformly distributed okay so your range is 1 to 100 and there are 1 million numbers uh, integers in this range and then you define your bucket something like this 1 to 2, 2 to 3, sorry, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, 7 to 8, so on and so forth. Last will be 99 to 100. And if this, if the 1 million integers are uniformly distributed, okay, using some random number generator. then the number of elements that will come here the number of elements that will come here they will all be of almost the same size okay so the, the so this bucket size uh, if this is let's say six then this won't be 60 because that means that the input was not uniformly distributed okay so the bucket size will be almost equal and because there are how many buckets will be there you will have 50 buckets okay for a range of Hundred numbers, right? So now you are you you are ensuring that very less number of elements fall in each bucket, and then you can probably use a uh, bucket sort, and that's the that's where the time complexity of bucket sort derives. So time complexity of bucket sort is worst case order of n square, like we all have guessed. If the bucket distribution is very bad or the input sequence is not uniformly distributed, so worst case it is order of n square. But average case, if the average case, if the input is uniformly distributed, okay, then it gives an order of n search time complexity. Okay. So this is your bucket sort. Okay. Now bucket sort does not have that criteria that it should only work. So if the range is 1 billion, then okay, then you can, you are only storing the number of buckets. So you can define that your buckets, your buckets can be much lesser, right? So that's the idea behind bucket sort. Okay. But the problem with bucket sort is this thing. Okay. And that's why it's not very frequently used. Worst case, it is order of n square. Okay. So we discussed bucket sort. Why did I discuss if the worst case time complexity is order of n square was because of this fact that you guys should know that if you have a uniformly distributed input,
input with a range. If you have a uniformly distributed input with a range, and this range can be very high, it, it range can be something which count sort does not allow, then you can use bucket sort. Okay. Okay. And your count sort works on all type of input. Only criteria is that, that the range should fit the memory, right? And count sort always, best case, worst case, always works in order of n. But bucket sort, worst case becomes order of n square. And only average case is order of n. Average case is the case when the input is uniformly distributed. And then, and if we create buckets of very small, small size, then we can solve this in order of n time. So worst case is order of n square, average case is order of n, okay? And that brings me to the next poll that we will have, which is this. One second. Yeah. So I'm launching a poll and basically there are four questions. What is average case count sort time complexity? What is worst case count sort time complexity? What is the average case bucket sort time complexity? And what is worst case bucket sort time complexity? So these four questions are there. Uh, you guys can answer. Okay. So average case count sort is what? Worst case count sort is what? Worst case count sort, okay? Average case bucket sort is what? And worst case bucket sort is what? So worst case bucket sort we all have discussed is order of n squares. Best case count, uh, bucket sort, average case and best case bucket sort is order of n. And for count sort, it's always order of n. Worst case, best case, everything is order of n. Okay, it doesn't go order of n square because we create a count array. Our only constraint is that we can't use count sort if the range is not defined or if the range does not fit our memory. That's the only constraint, but the worst case is always order of n in count sort. So count sort proves to be a better algorithm to solve a certain type only for certain type of input. Bucket sort still doesn't fit our criteria because average case is order of n, but worst case goes towards order of n square. So that becomes a problem in bucket sort, okay? Great, so I see the answers are in line with what we have studied. And let's move to the next section now. Can we say that the, there is a question, can we say that the best case of bucket sort is count sort? Yes, exactly. So best, so basically count sort is bucket sort where the buckets range is just that number, right? So right now I created buckets of this size, right? Five to six, six to seven, seven to eight. But if I create buckets of range one, like this bucket only has numbers, which is three. This bucket has only numbers, which is four, five, six, seven. Then this becomes count sort, right? So count sort is a special case of bucket sort, but bucket sort is the general algorithm. So that was rightly said, okay? So any questions so far? I will just take a break of uh, a minute or so. Any questions so far? Anybody has any? Okay, great, great. Any, any, any more questions? Okay, so now let me go back to my slide deck. And let's, okay, so we covered counting sort, average case, First case order n, bucket sort, average case order n, worst case order n square. Count sort is a special case of bucket sort. I hope this is clear. So if the bucket, so we are divided into buckets and buckets had a range. If that range is just that number itself, then it becomes count sort, right? And count sort, you are just counting the number of times that element is coming. And we all know what count sort is. And then, okay, now time for quiz number four. So let's make quiz number four public and let's see your answers. So I think there are two questions. Time complexity to sort 1 million 8-bit positive integers. What sorting I'm not asking. I'm asking what is the best time complexity in which you can sort 1 million 8-bit positive integers and then average time complexity. Average time complexity, the term average is very important, to sort 1 million uniformly distributed 32-bit integers. Okay. Let's see what is the answer.
So 32 bit positive integer can't be solved using count sort, at least in your laptop, because uh, count sort won't work. So you'll have to think of another sort. Uh, it won't fit your memory, right? It will be 2 power 31 minus 1, and 2 power 31 is more than 10 power 7. Okay. So what algorithm will I use? Should I use much sort in any one of them? Can I? Just think to whatever we have discussed today and try to answer. So the first question has already been answered by me. 8-bit positive integers, which sort you will use? Can anybody start writing in chat? For 8-bit positive integer, what will you use? What sort? Count sort. Awesome. And for the second question, average time complexity, okay, average case time complexity to solve, to sort 1 million uniformly distributed 32-bit uh, positive integers. So the worst case, as we have discussed, if, we, if I use even bucket sort here, then worst case will be order of n square, but average time complexity of bucket sort was order of n, right? And it fits all my checkboxes because the input is uniformly distributed, right? And the range is defined that 32 bit. So I will use bucket sort here. Okay. So there should be no doubt. A second type is a typical example of a bucket sort application. Here the range is defined and you can't use count sort and the input is uniformly distributed. So it checks all my three boxes. I can't use count sort because the range is too high to fit my RAM. Uh, the input is uniformly distributed. So I will use bucket sort to solve this. I just need to ensure how I create my buckets, but I can do this better than merge sort if I create a good size, a good size of buckets. I can solve this in order of n time. Okay. So the average time complexity, if you use bucket sort, will be order of n here. Order of n log n will be given by merge sort, but that will be that will be not better than the average time complexity of bucket sort. Okay. So that's the answer of one and two question. So I will end the poll now. So the answer of both the questions are for 8-bit positive integers, you'll use count sort. For 16-bit positive integers also, you'll use count sort. For 32-bit positive integers, if they are uniformly distributed, now you will use bucket sort here, right? But the worst is ca worst case may merge sort will be better. But average case may bucket sort will be better. Always remember this, okay? So bucket sort is a little tricky. So if you are trying to write a code where the input is unknown, right? So bucket sort will guarantee that most of the time you will solve this in order of n. Sometimes you will solve it in order of n square. Merge sort will guarantee that I will always solve this in n log n. Okay. Best case, worst case, average case, I will solve this in n log n. So depending on how you want. So if you are okay with order of n square sometimes, but order of n most times, because average case is order of n for bucket sort, then you will use bucket sort. Otherwise you will use merge sort. So this should be clear. The question was average time complexity. So in this case, you will use bucket sort, not merge sort. So again, a very important interview question uh, where a lot of people fail. You won't use merge sort here. You will prefer bucket sort because it gives a better average time complexity than merge sort in case of 32-bit positive integers. Okay. Okay. So uh, is Zara on the call? Yeah, yeah. Zara, okay. you can go through oh. uh, some of these things and then I'll. Yeah, yeah. The class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, guys, Zara here from X45. I uh, wanted to let you all know that at X45, we have data structures and algorithms as well as system design, online live sessions, and self paced mm -hmm. courses where you can uh, enroll yourself for the course. And um, yeah, these courses are delivered by Google and Microsoft Explorers. We also help our candidates with interview preparation to land their dream jobs. Do visit our website www.expertify.com to explore more about our courses. And you can also ping me regarding the further details of the course and the badges. Okay. I'll just uh, ping my number in the chat box. Cool. Thank you, Dara. I will continue forward. Okay. So that was a little bit about the company for which. Uh, I am uh, giving this talk on. So as she has said, okay, you guys can follow up if needed. Okay, so now let's come back to sorting. Okay, so we read about uh, count sort. We studied about bucket sort. And bucket sort, uh, we know that count sort is a specialization of bucket sort. 
and count sort works in order of n bucket sort also works in order of n average case but worst case bucket sort is order of n square now the algorithm which i will teach you will work in order of n no matter what okay so this is the highlight that this is how many of you know about radix sort okay any anybody here know about radix sort so radix sort is probably the algorithm that every one of you should know before appearing in any interview you are going in okay firstly this is this turns out to be the only algorithm to sort strings and this is such an algorithm which will sort almost all the questions that we have asked so far in polls and quizzes in order of n irrespective of range uniform distribution and blah 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 no questions asked so let's start with radix sort i will again go back to my pen and paper method to explain this and you guys have to let me know when my screen is visible is my screen visible can i have a confirmation yes yes thank you yes okay so i am going to place five stars here this is a very important algorithm and a very big miss that we all are doing when we are sorting using merge sort blindly okay so let's start with radix sort without much delay so before we will uh, so let's start with it okay so radix sort i will write the algorithm first and it works like a magic so it is very hard to explain why it works we will run it through two three examples you will know it works and then we will come to why it works because if i start with why it works it's going to be very hard to explain so how radix sort is applied let's start with that so if you, let's say you have uh, five numbers and uh, let's say one more number okay so let's say you have i hope this is not sorted let's distribute it a little bit 999 here 432 here okay so now this is your input array like i said forget about range forget everything this is a very general algorithm works on all types of range all types of inputs okay there is only one constraint which i will discuss in the end so how this works so firstly the first step of this algorithm is that if you are given a list of integers positive integers okay our entire session is on positive integers at the end i will talk about negative integers so we have positive integers 134 999 217 738 Four thirty-two. There are something on chat. Let me just check. Okay, so four thirty-two. And now, uh, what I do is that the first step of this algorithm is that go to the least significant digit. Does anybody know what least significant digit means in a number? So if this is a number, what does least significant digit mean? Any guesses? so least significant digit means the contribution of the digit in that number is least or the first element at the first place right so just to give you an idea 134 is written 1 times 10 power 2 plus 3 times 10 power 1 plus 4 times 10 power 0 so the contribution are 10 power 0 10 power 1 10 power 2 so you will see that the number at the last digit उसका कंट्रीब्यूशन इज टेन पावर जीरो सेकंड पे इज ऑलवेज टेन पावर वन थर्ड पे इज ऑलवेज टेन पावर टू अगर इफ देर इज समथिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ इट लेट से नाइन देन दिस विल बी टेन पावर थ्री एंड दैट विल बी द मोस्ट सिग्निफिकेंट डिजिट सो द लीस्ट सिग्निफिकेंट डिजिट यू कैन जस्ट ब्लाइंडली रिप्लेस दैट विद द फर्स्ट डिजिट फ्रॉम द राइट द फर्स्ट डिजिट फ्रॉम द राइट यू विल पिक इन ऑल ऑफ दीज केसेस सो यू हैव फोर नाइन Seven, eight, and two. And now I will sort, rearrange this number on the basis of four, nine, seven, eight, and two. Okay, let's do that. Like I said, I will not go into logic. Let's just do that. 
this is the step number one. Okay, so I'm going to arrange them. So four nine seven eight two, which comes first? Four nine seven eight two. Me say, first of all, of course, two will come. So I'll write four thirty two first. Then what will come? Four comes. So I'll write one thirty four second. Then what comes? Seven thirty eight. Eight comes right. So I'll write this. Sorry, two one seven comes. And then seven thirty eight comes. And then nine 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 comes. Okay. So this is your first step. So you now you can see two, four, seven, eight, and nine. The last significant or the least significant bit is least significant digit is sorted. Okay. Now we will repeat it with the second least significant digit. Okay. So let's do it. Okay. Let not. Yeah, we can erase this. <clears throat> So now we will do this for the second. So step number two. Now we'll rearrange this. So now three three one three nine. Okay. So three three one three nine. Now so which one will come first? One one is the smallest. So two one seven comes first. Then what are there are three numbers four thirty two one thirty four seven thirty eight. All of these three come uh, with the number three. As their second least significant digit. So when in case of tie, preserve the order of the last step. Okay. So I will preserve the order. So four thirty two comes first, one thirty four comes second, and seven thirty eight comes last, and then nine 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 comes. Okay. Now the third step. Third step is sort with respect to the no surprises. Third least significant digit, and this is the last step in this case. Let's sort this. So two, four, one, seven, nine. So which is the smallest? One thirty-four, because one is the smallest. Then what? Two, two, one, seven. Then what? Four, four, thirty-two. Then what? Seven, seven, thirty-eight. Then what? Nine, nine, nine. Is this sequence sorted? Yes. How that works? Magic. Okay. So why it works will come second, but let's just run it through another example so that you all are convinced that firstly that this works. Okay, another input we will take another five types of input, and we will divide this into four types. So the input is nine one 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 eighty one one two two three four one eight. And six one nine. Let's see. Okay. So what will be the first step? Sorry. What will be the first step? You will sort with respect to the last least significant bit. So least significant bit with respect to me, we will sort. Is it already sorted? Yes, so we don't need to do anything. Okay, so we will just write. In case of tie, preserve the order in the previous step. Remember, so I'm just going to copy everything over. Now, what is the second least significant digit? Okay, now let's sort it. Step number two. So what is the one eight two one one? So now there are three ones. So which one will I pick first? Anybody? Nine one one four one eight six one nine. Which one will I pick first? I'll preserve the order in the previous step. Nine one one. Nine one one. Yes. Correct. Four one eight six one nine. And then two two three. And then one eight one. I have taken knowingly an input, which will clear all your doubts that it really works. Okay. And now. With respect to this digit, you will sort, and no surprises. What's the first number that will come? Nine four six two one one eighty one. What's the second number that will come? Two twenty three. Third number that will come? Four one eight six one nine nine one one. Okay, and this is sorted. 
so why this works let's talk about why this works now i will come to why this works so it works because of this funda so because the weight of each digit is this right so if so you want the last sorting has to be with respect to the highest significant digit if this was the first sorting that we did let's say in this we started with the most significant bit and sort that first and the least significant bit last then the numbers would have been jumbled up right because firstly if you start you get 181 223 418 619 and 911 which is the correct sorting order you directly get this but then when you start sorting with respect to second everything will jumble up and third it will mess up more okay the idea here is which you will understand with this input is that if my least highest significant bit is always same okay then i will then this input is very similar to this so if i sort this correctly i will get the answer if my this number is also same in these two cases then i need to sort these both correctly and if this is same then i need to sort this both correctly so the logical explanation is that you start with the least significant bit first then second least significant digit then third least significant digit and finally the most uh, significant bit so that the last major sorting reh raha hai is with respect to the highest significant digit right and we saw if we proceed it in the reverse order then we jumble up right so initially we'll get this then we will go here and then we will go here right we'll jumble things up completely right 11381 we will proceed like this from here to here to here so it will mess my order up so that's the only logical way in which i can intuitively explain it to you guys we we'll look for a mathematical explanation it will be big proof but yeah so the this is the algorithm of radix sort so what is the algorithm sort with respect to least significant digit then and keep on doing it so first least significant then second then third then fourth so on, right and finally you will have you will have sorted sequence so this is what radix sorting is okay any questions so far before we move move ahead to what the time complexity is how we will implement all of that will come later any questions so far on radix sort i will talk about how we compute the time complexity now so far any questions any anybody has any doubt okay great so now let's come to the time complexity so we know that the algorithm is very simple let's start with the least significant digit okay let's do that 9 1 1 2 3 8 1 1 7 6 1 0 6 1 0 and 381 now we will look at the input with respect to the time complexity so if i ask you and in each step this is the problem that i will give you a digit i'll give you a place at which i look all the digits and rearrange my numbers so that with respect to this digit it is sorted right and it can be any of these three right there are only three possible values here so with respect to any of the significant digit place significant place in any of on the basis of any of the place of the digit i will ask you to rearrange the number such so that with respect to that place the input is sorted okay this is a very simple question so when i start with the least significant bit then i see that my numbers are if there are 1 million numbers can anybody in chat tell what will be the range of the last least significant bit number range of the input this is the array it can have 1 million entries as well but what will be the range of the numbers in my array range matlab ki permissible value of each element will be what what values can your last least significant digit take each digit can take what values from it can either be 0 it can either be 1 it can either be 2 can it be 100 also can the last digit be 100 so can you tell me what will be the range of each digit very simple question anybody in chat 0 to 9 also awesome. so it will always be 0 to 
So you have an array which can have one million numbers. You have a range which is zero to nine. Nine fits my memory. Which sort will I use to sort this sequence? Just wondering. Anybody can answer. Have we looked at some something like this? Have we looked at a sorting algorithm which looks something like this? Count sort. Amazing. Count sort. And now you will see how the pieces are adding up. Count sort is used by radix sort, and radix sort is probably the best algorithm to sort integers. And that turns out to be the case. So, but here a little bit of modification you will do on count sort because now you are not just counting. You are not sorting this. You are not sorting this, right? You are sorting the numbers associated with these, right? So that small modification will do. We will see how in this slide. That let's see the numbers: nine one one two thirty eight one one seven six one zero three eighty one. So nine one one two thirty eight. <coughs> Sorry, one one seven six one zero seven six one zero, and the last number was three eighty one three eighty one. So now this is what we will do. So we'll just do a small modification. We'll have a count array like we have always have count sort, which will be of range as you have already told ten zero to nine. Right, and we will have to count. So now, instead of counting, the only change you will do here is based on this digit, you will append the number. Okay, so zero pe kaun sa hai? Six one zero hai. Then I'll write that. One pe what are there? There are two. So if there are two, then how? Then in which order you will write? In which order will? We have already discussed, right? If there is a tie, then what do you do? Which one do you write first? The one which has occurred first. We'll you'll preserve the order. So you'll traverse always from top to bottom, and you'll write nine one one here and six one zero here. Sorry, this is not a tie, right? This is the tie. Three one eight ten nine one three eighty one. And then nine one one two thirty eight one one seven six one zero. Seven, you will write one on seven here. And then for two thirty eight, you will write two thirty eight. And then what you will do? You will traverse the count array just like before. Instead of duplicating, you are just going to append them: six one zero nine one one three eighty one and one one seven and two thirty eight. Now you have sorted with respect to the last bit. Now we will do the same. With respect to the second last bit, so again we have we have the same count array, and now we'll start appending. Let's see. So now again we'll append. So which? So zero pe kuch aayega nahi aayega. For one, what will come? Six one zero will come. Nine one one again appends here. Three eighty one goes here. One one seven goes here. Two thirty eight goes here. Clear? Any doubt? Now again, I will iterate through all of my count array and append. Keep appending these lists, and then what will I get? Six one zero nine one 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 seven two thirty eight three eighty one. And now I will repeat the same for the last significant digit, which is six nine one. Two and three. So now let's do that. So for zero, nothing comes. So six one zero goes here. Nine one one goes here. One one seven goes here. Two thirty eight goes here. Three eighty one goes here. And now I again I iterate from the top to bottom, and I keep appending. So one one seven, two thirty eight, three eighty one, six one zero, and nine one one. And now I have sorted this. Any questions on the implementation? Implementation is also clear, right? Now you are having a count array, so array may you can't store a list. So now you have a vector or a list of count array. Okay, so you have a list of list basically. So you can you can have an array, and each of these array is storing a list now. Okay.
So these are all lists. There can be multiple entries. You are just making sure that you are always visiting this array left to right and appending here so that you are preserving the order of the previous step. And then in one pass, you go and append all this list and create your output. And after you have done it on all the digits, then you will get the final answer. Any questions, any doubts? Same order, okay, awesome. Now let's come to some, does this work always? Now let's come to the basic question. Okay, radix sort, I'm understanding. But you know what? I noticed that in all your inputs, the number of digits of all the numbers were same. What if the input is like this? How will it work now? Now, how will you compare? This digit will compare to what here and to what here? Right? That becomes the next question. Right? Isn't it? That becomes a question, right? So if there is a number here, then what is here? Can anybody answer? Zero. Zero, of course. So that is also solvable because you can always write a number with, append a number with as many zeros as possible. Okay. So I will go to the largest number in the input and I will just append that many zeros in my algorithm and I will do, and I'll repeat the same step. In fact, you don't even need to append the algorithm. Okay. So as one of the steps in this algorithm will be to find the kth bit from the right. Kth digit from right. So given a number, 22383, find the second digit from right. Can anybody tell me a mathematical formula to find it? So you divide it. If you need to find the second digit, so you divide it by 10 power 2 minus 1. And then you take modulo 10, always. So if you need for kth digit, then the algorithm is that you divide it by 10 power k minus 1, and you take modulo 10. So for the, let's start one by one. So for the first digit from right, divided by 10 power k minus 1, what is 10 power k minus 1 if k is 1? What will be 10 power k minus 1 is k, is k is, if k is 1? 1. n power 0, which is 1. So 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 8, 3 modulo 10. What will be this? I hope all of you know. Percent 3. 3. That's the first element from right. If I want to know the second element from right, I will do 10 power k minus 1. k is 2. So 2 minus 1. 10 power 2 minus 1 is 10. So if I divide integer division of 2, 2, 3, 8, 3 by 10, what will I get? I'll get this 2, 2, 3, 8 modulo 10. What will I get? 8. Yeah. Awesome. Is this scalable? Yes. Number divided by 10 power k minus 1 modulo 10. And you'll get the kth digit from right. So question was, do I need to append zeros here? So if I need to get the one, two, three, four, five, if I need to get the fifth element from right in two, two, three, eight, three, two, two, three, eight, three, fifth element from right, five minus one modulo 10. So this is 10 to the four, 10 to the four means I will deduct four digits from here, right? And modulo 10 is two, which is right. I get two. If I do this for 23, what do I get? If I divide 23 with 10 to the power 4, then what do I get? Integer division, 23 by 10 power 4, what will I get? 0. 0. Modulo 10. 0. Right? Still 0. Remainder, if I divide 0 by 10, what is the remainder? 0. 0. All of this will come. Zero. Very simple, very elegant algorithm. Works always. Okay. So this is radix sort. And now I will write how an engineer should write radix sort. So radix sort is for each digit of highest number. So firstly, make it more simple. Find the largest number. So how do you find largest number in an array? Order of 
So you find the largest number. So why do I find the largest number? I know I need to iterate. That many steps will be there. Number of digits in that number. Jitne bhi digit honge, that many times I will have to repeat my radix sort. Right? So let that now calculate number of digits in that number. Let that be D. So from D minus one down to zero. Let's write in plain English. So for D times, right? Or let's for the sake of simplicity, write from one to D. Find the ith. If this is i, i is going from one to D. Find the ith least significant digit. Run count sort with respect to that. And that's it, right? I will do this D times and I will get a sorted array. Any questions? How will you find the largest number? Do I need to tell? No. How will you calculate the number of digits in the high largest number? Can anybody answer? If you want to find how many digits are there in a number, if I say 100, 100 में कितने digit है? How will you find? The highest power of 10, which divides this number and is not zero, plus one is the number of digits. So if I divide by 10, then I get 10. If I divide by 100, then I get one. But if I divide by 10 power three, then it becomes zero. So the highest power of 10, which with, with which I could divide without getting answer zero was 10 power two. So I will say that the number of digits are two plus one, three. Or to make it simple, the first power of 10, which when divided by that number gives zero is means that many number of digits are there. So for 99, if you divide by 10 power two, then the answer will be zero. So there are how many digits? Two digits. For 100, if you divide by 10 power three, this is the first power of 10 for which you will get, if you do the division, you will get zero. So how many digits are there? Three digits are there. You start dividing from 10, then 10 squared, then 10 cube, then 10 four, then 10 five. The moment it becomes zero, that many digits are there. Okay. And then from one to D, run count sort. Count sort takes how much time? What is time complexity of count sort? Write in chat. Let me know. You have already answered this question. Time complexity of count sort is order of n. So what becomes time complexity of this whole algorithm? You are repeating this D times, right? D is the number of digits. So what is time complexity of radix sort? Radix sort time complexity. D times N. And what is D? What is D? Number of digits in Largest number. Can number of digits be 1 million? Can any computer store a number which is of as an integer? Matlab, even modern computers are storing at max 64 bit integers. So, 64 bit integer, if you write the highest 64 bit integer, which will be 2 power 63 minus 1. And if you see how many digits are there in that number, okay, then you will be surprised. There are only probably how many digits will be there. So two power 63 is what? Two power 10 we know is 1000. So power six. So this is 10 power three times six, which is 10 power 18. So let's say there are 19 digits. There will be only 19 digits. So D at max can be 90. So this is always linear. D times n you will write D is number of digits. In case of integer, you can write it directly order of n. D is a constant. D can't be more than 10 power 19. D cannot be more than 10 power 19 if you are sorting integers. Okay. You can't have an integer which is having 1 million digits. 
that can't be stored as an integer. Sorry, that will be stored as a string. I'm talking about if you're sorting integers using radix sort, maximum number of permissible digits can be 19. Chalo 19 nahi to 30 hoga. So for 30 also D is constant, right? So radix sort on integers always works in linear time. And this is the main point. And this is why it is better than all the sorting algorithms that we have studied today. But we needed to know what count sort is because radix sort is implemented using count sort. So radix sort solves all integer sorting in order of n time. Very big statement. Any integer sorting you will do from now on in your life, you will not use much sort. You are going to use radix sort. Any questions? Any questions, any doubts? No. No. Great. So now let's move back to my slide. And let's see what we have next. So we did, okay. I need to do radix sort on strings. Radix sort average case was this order of n for integers. <clears throat> okay. Time before I do for strings time. Okay. Let me explain how this works on string because it's quite easy and in fact, you guys will tell me how it works on the strings. Let me share my screen. Let me know once my screen is visible. For me, it's showing that it's visible. Can anybody confirm? Yep. You guys can see my screen. Okay. Awesome. Can, can anybody tell how will we sort for a string? So let's say you have two words, cat, bat, sad, and man. How will I use radix sort? to sort this string, hint, there is no change. There is no change. You will start, you will sort with respect to the least significant digit. In this case, mein, there is no least significant digit, but you will start with the first character from, right? Okay. And you will sort this. So, pehle aajayega sad, then mad, then cat, and then bat. Remember, don't mix bat and cat. You have to always preserve the order from the previous step. Even this is a step. This is step number zero. Now step number one. Now what is step number two? With respect to A, 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 A. Okay, awesome. So now all of them are sorted. And now with respect to the la largest significant digit. So what comes first? Bad comes first. Cat comes second. Mad, I think, comes third. And sad comes MNOPPQS. Yes. So now this is sorted. Any questions? Any anybody is having any doubt? Does the time complexity change now? Any any changes? What will be time complexity for uh, integers? It were order, order of n for strings. What will it be? Order of if there are n strings, then what will be the time complexity be? Order of let's see how many people tell this right. Order of what? For integers, it was order of n times d, and d was capped because integers we know can't be more than 19, 20. Okay, uh, you bring, bring a very big architecture or something, 30, let's say. Usse zada, you can't store that big integer. It's impossible. You will have to store an integer more which has more than 30 digits as a string only. So in this case, so that's why we said for integers because uh, the digits are capped at 20, 30 max. So the time complexity is the order of n. But when we you do radix sort on a strings, then what it is? Can we cap the number of characters in a string? No, we cannot. A string can have any number of characters. So it becomes order of n times l. L is the length of the l is length of the smallest string, largest string, which string? Largest string. Yeah. N times L. Okay. Now I will go back to my slide. And there is an awesome quiz. And yeah. So now let me launch my quiz number five for today. One, two, three. Launched. Okay. So time complexity to sort one million words. Oops. Time complexity to sort 1 million integers. 
वट इज द आंसर फॉर सेकेंड क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ओके वन मिलियन वर्ड का देर इज अल मिस्टेक एन टाइम्स लेंथ ऑफ द वर्ड राइट नन ऑफ दीज विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर यार बट या इफ द लेंथ ऑफ द वर्ड लेट से लेट्स मी रिवाइज द क्वेश्चन टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्स टू सॉर्ट वन मिलियन वर्ड्स वेर the largest possible size of a word is 10 then what is the time complexity order of n right answer of both is order of n and using what algorithm radix sort theek hai so now go back and uh, check all the answers that you gave okay the answer that you gave on the first question what was my first question when i started this session when i started this session my first question was this best time complexity to sort 1 million numbers what's the answer bucket sort okay before it that depends actually let's go to that is count yeah yeah uh, ignore that let's start with the second question best time complexity to sort 1 million integers blindly radix sort whenever you are sorting radix. integers you will always say radix sort what is the best time complexity to sort 1 million strings Radix sort. Radix sort. Order of n times the length. Now we will come to the tricky part. That why, why did somebody come up with merge sort and why is that popular? That is for the first question, which is one million numbers, and you will see it now. Yeah, yeah, we were here. Now let's come to it. So generalized sorting algorithms. Can radix sort floating point numbers? Anybody? Can you sort? so we were doing radix sort on integers right can it work for floating point numbers maybe yes but can it work for recurring numbers those recurring numbers remember 1 by 3 1.33333 how many digits are there in 1.33333 any guesses how many numbers are there how many digits are there in 1 by 3 in decimal 0.3333 Is it infinite? Oh, uh, I think fifteen. No, it's infinite. Nice joke. It's infinite, right? These are recurring numbers. They don't stop. So when you talk about real numbers, real numbers are not just integers. So on the number line, let's go back to very basics. So the larger set is real numbers. Uske andar comes rational, irrational, and blah blah blah. So basically, real numbers inside that you have integers. So for integers, you will always use radix sort, done and dusted. Okay, over that problem is solved. What is outside integers and inside real numbers? We are not talking about imaginary numbers so far because I don't think we sort imaginary numbers in computers. So if you are sorting real numbers outside integers, which are floating point numbers, recurring numbers, then which algorithm you will use? It's written on the slide. Merge sort, quick sort, heap sort, and that's why these algorithms are popular. These work by comparing two numbers. So far, we did not compare in radix sort. Did we compare numbers? No, we compare digits. We did not compare the whole number. Merge sort, quick sort are comparison-based sorting algorithms. They compare themselves with the other number, and there is a way in which they work, which we'll talk about in the next class. So merge sort works that way. Quick sort similarly works that way. Heap sort works that way. And these are generalized sorting algorithms. This will also work for integer. This will also work for real number. But the bad thing here is that integer, they are doing over engineering. Integers can be sorted in order of n. Any integers can be sorted in order of n time. But merge sort will sort that in how much time? Order of n log n time. Okay. So now let's go back to the first question that I asked. Okay. now answer all these three questions what's the best time complexity to sort 1 million numbers when i say numbers they are not integers they are they include integers they include fractional numbers they include rational numbers they include real numbers they include floating point numbers they include everything so what's the best time complexity to sort 1 million numbers now what comparison the, comparison sorting comparison based sorting which are Merge sort, heap sort, which is order of n log n. So remember, the answer of the answer is merge sort only if you are sorting one million numbers. For integers and string, the answer is always what sort? Radix sort. 
okay so you'll use radix sort to sort 1 million or 1 billion integers whatever it is to sort strings there is only one algorithm apparently to sort a string there is only one algorithm which does that in this time complexity there is no other alternative so radix sort is the algorithm that you will use to sort integers and strings and only when the numbers are different than integers you will use mud sort heap sort quick sort you'll even think about them I, i'm not discussing them i'll discuss them in the next classes but yeah so any questions now before i think i guess this is okay there is one quiz amazing let's have okay let's answer the answers of this quiz 5 so everybody has said order of n to sort 1 million words one person has said n log n and n square okay uh most of you have said order of n uh, to sort 1 million integers all of you have said order of n that's great only one person order of log n okay so now let's launch the last poll that we have for today first in this poll which is again a very interesting problem and i this wa- i i just don't i want this everybody to answer this correctly time complexity to sort 1 million numbers what is the time complexity to sort 1 million numbers uh, don't make any errors guys uh, 1 million numbers theek hai in interview nobody is going to clarify your number is, is not integer blah 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 i asked you a very blanket statement time complexity to sort 1 million numbers this is n log n there should be no doubt okay this session is to give you more insight not to confuse you 1 million numbers is always much sort but inside numbers when i go to special cases like integers like strings okay numbers is stored as strings then you start using radix sort so only algorithm if the take away of this class is one algorithm then that's radix sort to implement radix sort you need count sort so the take away are two algorithms radix sort and count sort why did we study bucket sort because count sort is a speciality of bucket sort okay in fact you use a uh, uses the variation of count sort when you are implementing radix sort where you are not counting the number rather appending that number corresponding to the digit right remember that's why we studied count sort bucket sort and finally radix sort and we conclude that for integers and strings we know an algorithm which solves my use case in order of n time in linear time for a strings it is n times the length of the string okay length of string can be infinite right remember that that's the difference between integers and strings strings can have any number of digits any number of characters but integers are bounded they can't have more than 20 30 digits okay it's impossible to store so that's all i had for this session i hope this was useful and i will just launch a session feedback Uh, just like you were